you okay well here hold on let me stop the tape here we go three two one welcome to stockmarketfunding.com home to the professional trader home to the beginning trader home to everyone alike and what we're going to show here today is the trades that we did on 426 and what we did was that I want everyone to know that this is called the S&P 500 because that's what it is and basically here's our logo nice as, as it is stockmarketfunding.com start trading a fifty thousand dollar account at no risk to you anyways we're gonna go through the tape now and basically the logos on the tape so I can take it off um, here's the thing I'm gonna show the 1210 put contract which is this is the level two and basically last Saturday's training session it was a week ago Saturday that everyone was here and I had diagrammed the trade and I said how we were gonna make a fortune and I also said that the S&P 500, which I will actually go into another videotape on second tape, as to what the technicals were at the time that we did the trade. And just remember, one thing about stockmarketfunding.com, everybody likes to talk about everything. We don't just talk here. We actually show the result with the live trade being recorded right at the time of entry, and we show what it is. We feel that everybody should have the right to know that what they're being told was an actual event that it was truthful and that they weren't being fed a bunch of bull crap and we take great talent in our work working with our students and everyone alike on the day that we did this this was 426 I had showed last week that the actual options were inflated over here and that the inflated price on the 1210 put right up here for May was inflated. It was up around $37. We bought the option down here that day, that low, when the traders were here, it was 1480. We bought, oh, about 200 contracts right around between 15, 1520. We popped, the market sold off, the S&P sold off the following day, and it took these options right here. If you look down here, you can see right here, the high that day was 1870, our entries were 15, 15, 20. Right here, I'm pointing to it. Now, the next day, the very next day, that option popped up to 39.51. You do the math. If you had only 10 contracts for $15,000, you'd have made about, well, 22, 23,000. What we did was, they were inflated over here. They were deflated is where we bought. That big pop made them inflated. We sold up in here. We sold some around 37 and 35, even though that the high was 39.51. At the time we were selling that, we were buying this down here. Now, let me show you here on the video. Look, it's a May 10, 1180 call. This is a 1210 put. And we bought down here, here's the date that we bought it. We bought it on this day. When this contract got down here to around $24, it was up here at the high at $44. We bought down here and our entry points were around $25, $70 and $26 a contract. Now, we were already short, that inflated, watch. When that inflated, the 1180, which is the other side of that short, this is a long position on the S&P. That's a short, this was the short position. This is the long position right here. This is that big gap down that day. That was the, the day that the market really didn't do anything. And the prior day after, when Ray Ray was here, he was watching me come out of these contracts and selling that. And we bought this one, didn't we, Ray Ray? And we bought this contract down here, like I said, around $25, $80, $26. They popped the contract, and we, were ex we exited here. We went long here because the S&P 500 wouldn't break support at 1180 So we bought the other side of our position. So as a market maker... What we did was 
that we had the big move. We got out and bought the 1180 against that put. And we were in it. They popped it on Thursday, and we sold it. And it's right back down here to $25 again. Now, you can see what happened here. That popped. We sold up at the high. They popped that down. And on Friday's big sell-off, you went another $12 up. That's this put contract. Low of the day, $18.75. High of the day, $34. The thing about being a market maker is he doesn't think one way. And we also said last week, we also have it on the website at stockmarketfunding.com, the logo that you seen earlier. And basically, you could go there. All the trades were recorded live. We also said last week that the markets were putting in their high and that there's four stages to a market top and it was time to finally uh, short the S&P. And because of the four stages to a market top, you go down, you have that reversal up, and then you had a big reversal back down in the S&P 500. What I want to emphasize here is how we did the trade and how the 1210 put, which is now back in the money, it's in the money because the S&P closed at 1186. So 1210 down to 1186, and we're right back down here. Now, when we go into our second trade, what we're going to do here is find out what the S&P 500 is going to do, and I'm going to show the S&P 500 because these were the inflated area, and what you don't know is you don't know what the role of a market maker is. He's got special permissions. Why do you think they got the edge? He sold short up here, and he made all that money down here. And if I was selling short the contract, just like you would do a stock, it drops, I buy the contract back and I cover the contract on a short. And if I'm shorting here, I'm going long here, no matter what. I am not, I have to go long here if I'm going to short here so that I could withstand any gap in the futures or any kind of volatility. I've set my volatility because I'm a market maker. So if I'm going long here, if I'm going short here, I'm going long there. If I'm going short, because the market maker could short the call, just like you do a stock. And if I'm going to short the call, so I sold out of the position, but if I'm going to short it, you have to have a million dollar account to be permission. But you could short that down, but you'd have to be long. And you could see the trading ranges, both long and short simultaneously. And if I was long, I'm selling there. If I'm selling short here, I'm going long here again. And you can see the downside. And this is what a market maker does. He, he, you know, he doesn't have to buy a call on a put like you do. No, he can just operating, selling short and going long, just like you could do on a stock. He can do it in this market. 99.99% .99 of the public do not understand what a market maker's role is and what they're permission to do. You don't know because you haven't been there. All right. Uh, one thing about the trade was that we're going to recap it. Selling short, the 1180 call, going long to 1210 put. When that popped, I made money, and when that dropped, I made money. So I made double the amount of money on the trade. That dropped, I got all the profit. That popped, I got the profit. And it all happened very simultaneously and seamlessly event. And the cash register ringed at the same time time and that is the gift about being in the SMF Pro Trading School uh, senior traders are permissioned because once again you got to have at least a million dollar account and basically selling naked here for the drop and buying long there and then applying whatever side of the trade is going to work it's very sophisticated trade management, risk management, market maker management, just as the market makers in the pit operate. 